what is up guys hello welcome to another tech thursday my name is jonathan price your host for every week every thursday we are coming at you we're going to do all sorts of things from scoring to tech to you name it we're going to cover it so uh, in this week's episode, we are actually going to dive into um, the emotions of sad and what they kind of represent and how these are going to kind of work out. So today is an absolutely beautiful Thursday here in Denver, Colorado. And today, if all of you are, if some of you are in the United States uh, and you're football fans, tonight is the first round of the NFL draft. So that's kind of exciting for all of you um, who are not in America. It is. Uh, hopefully maybe it's a holiday for you maybe it's a some sort of crazy fun day um but regardless i hope it is a fantastic thursday for you and i hope things are going really really well um this category for writing music is one of my absolute favorites because there's so much you can do with it in terms of actual emotion and um emotional content both in melody and um and chord structure wise, there's there's a ton of stuff to do. And so what I'm actually going to focus on is I'm not going to dive into like super detailed um, these detailed emotions like being isolated and uh, victimized and have grief and, you know, guilt and depressed and hurt. All, all of these are all generic sad emotions that you can um, incorporate into sad. And a lot of these you can actually incorporate into um, angry and fearful and disgusted. And so these kind of, these four, um, some of these words I've been going through them. And as I've been doing these videos are really interchangeable. And so I want you guys to realize that not only are these words interchangeable, but they can be, um, used in so many, I mean, they can be used in so many different ways in, in instead of just this, these specific categories. So don't feel like you have to say, oh, well, vulnerable, vulnerable can be an absolute fear. It can, that's something that's huge in, in, uh, in being afraid. So don't feel like you have to stay when you're talking to a director in this one category or in any of these categories, make sure that you feel safe enough and, um, confident enough to say, Hey, this may feel guilty, but we also feel scared. So how do we cross that? And, um, I don't think I'm going to talk too much about that, but that's just something you and your director are going to have to figure out. So, um, I'm going to take a drink real quick and we're going to just going to write some music and I'm going to talk about, um, some of the chord structures and things that we can use to create some of the sad music. So I got a Dr. Pepper, whatever your drink of choice is. If you're listening to this in the morning or you you're at night, I love Dr. Pepper and I love whiskey. So um, those are my two drinks, not of, not necessarily the, all I drink, but in any case, uh, get your favorite drink, sit back, relax. And here we go. All right. So when we talk about sad, we have these generic emotions, lonely, vulnerable, despair, guilty, depressed, we're hurt, embarrassed. Now embarrassed. We've seen it a couple of times. We've seen it here. Uh, do we see it in, I don't think we saw it in fearful or bad, but th that can be embarrassed can be one that's, um, cross platform, I guess, if you will, uh, disappointed in fear, empty, uh, remorseful, ashamed. So I have to turn my head cause these went backwards, powerless, grief, fragile, um, victimized, abandoned and isolated. So those are some of those things. So we're going to keep that in mind as we're scoring these. So the only thing, the only two instruments I'm going to use are piano and strings. And these two instruments just in and of themselves are so cliche and reminiscent of the sad category. Uh, they can also be in, um, happy a lot because of their, um, I guess their intimate nature and how, how much, um, how much mileage you can get out of them. So we're going to look at these. So let me close this. Uh, again, if you want to download this, you can actually download this wheel. It's on the, um, a film scoring network page, a Facebook page. So go look through that. You can just search uh, wheel of emotion chart and it should pop up. Uh, if not just message me and I'll send it to you. So, all right. So we have a piano and we're going to score two different types of sad music. We're going to start with, uh, the major sounding 
sad. And then we're going to also come at it from the clear, the, the, the typical minor sound. So we have, um, we're just going to stay in the key of C for simplicity. Okay, so there's our C chord. In the key of C, we're going to work on with the premise that we're um, going to be uh, using some accidentals uh, if we need to. So, but our, our typical C scale, C, D, E, F, G. It's always helpful for me to play the scale so that I know exactly where my tonal center is. Even though I know my tonal center is C, sometimes I may start a melody on the four chord or the five chord, or I might start a melody uh, with a minor six. So having that root, um, is absolutely critical. So just a real quick theory lesson. One chord, D minors are two, E minors are three, F majors are four. Sorry about that. Goodness gracious, it's gonna be a long video. G is our fifth chord. A minor is our sixth chord. B is our wonderful diminished seventh chord. And then we have C back to one. All right. Okay. So let's start with... Um, so we're going to start in the key of C and one of the big things that if you're starting on a major chord and you're trying to write something sad is that the next chord really needs to be minor. And it's typically a good idea to go with the, so you have three minor chords. You have either the D minor in the key of C, you have the E minor, or you have the A minor in the key of C. Okay. Those are your three minor chords. The, the one that gets the most impact, and I'll, and I'll demonstrate a couple of these, is you have a C minor, or C major, and if you go to an E minor, that probably has the most pull in terms of feeling sad. So here's a C to a D minor. Okay, that's, that's more poppy. And then you have the really pop version of this, which is C to A minor, you know, tons and tons of blues and pop music start with, with that. Um, and so we're going to write some, let's write something real quick in the key of C. So the, what the chord progression I'm going to use, I'm going to start with is just that C to E minor. Okay. Now your melody can be really determinant on how you voice these chords. So if I were to voice these in just root position chords, it's I'm not going to get that same sad feeling that well I could, but so here's here it is in root position. So C to E minor. Okay. Here it is in first position or first inversion, sorry. Okay, when I say first inversion, I'm taking the root and I'm putting it up here. Okay, so we have, so here's our root, first inversion, second inversion, if you didn't know what I was talking about earlier. So, there you go. Uh, this is second inversion. So we have C in second inversion to the E minor in second inversion. Okay. So the E is no longer in the bass, or the G, it's the B, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play these, and I want the third of my chord, for me in particular, for this example, I want the third of my chord to be the melody. And it doesn't have to work out that way. I could very well write it with, with a G on top to something like this. Okay. It sounds pretty. It sounds nice, but it's not quite sad enough. All right. So we want to make sure that we're getting plenty of sad emotion in there. So what I wanted to do is I want to focus on uh, this C in the first inversion. Now it's, it's C rooted in the left hand, but I play a C uh, with a first inver or a second inversion so that my uh, melody is, is the third. It's typically when you hear a melody, it's always the, almost always the highest voice that you hear 
Um, and composers do that a lot, and you got to be able to do that. You got to be able to take someone from the melody that they're hearing in either flutes and put them in the cellos, or you can manipulate how the melody is happening based in your chord structure. And that's in orchestration. And we'll get into orchestration in a couple of weeks. But um, for this example, I just wanted to put my melody in the third. Okay. So let's play around with this. So I'm going to start with a C chord. To the E minor. Okay, so my ear wants to go up. It's still wanting to go up. So I'm going to go up to the F. I'm going to come back down with the melody. Now I hear a chord here. So in your mind, you you your brain is already telling you where you want to go. Now it's your job to play by ear what your mind is wanting to hear. Because you've listened to so much music and you've listened to so much um, film scores that you that you that your body knows where the music should go. So if I play this progression again. Eh, it, it's okay. It doesn't, it's not really pulling me. Those first three chords are really pulling me somewhere, but I'm not entirely sure where. So let's try this again. So because I, I picked D minor because D, the F is the third in D minor. Right there. Okay. So I picked that. I didn't really like it. So let's try it again. Um, okay, so there's a couple of options here. We have, we have either the D minor, which we know doesn't work, or at least it didn't work for me. We have a D flat major, because F is also the third in D flat. That's a little more heroic than we need. We're not going for heroic, we're going for sad. So what else can we have that has F in the chord? Well, we have F major, which we've already used. We've come down from F major. We need something to change there, okay? Um, and this is some, some of the problems that you can get stuck in with, with having a melody that you hear a chord and you can't really quite figure it out and so you start changing the melody and when you start changing the melody you, you get more frustrated with it because uh, you have this particular melody in your head but the chords aren't matching so it's important to go through this particular process when trying to figure out um, how you want your music to sound so when we come down from this F I want that second note to have a different chord so we've we've done D minor We've done D flat major. Well, let's take a look at the, what we have in F. So we have F, we do F major. We know that doesn't work, we just came from it. We have F minor, okay. What else do we have? Uh, F could be the fifth of B flat or B flat minor. Okay, so we're just gonna work with those premised chords. Okay, so let's try it with uh, the B flat. So we're coming from, uh, we have here. That doesn't work. It could work if we were to set it up properly, but for this demonstration, it's not, it's not working quite well. So let's try a different one, B flat minor, which I can guarantee or almost guarantee that it won't work. Now this one could work um, if it's if it's orchestrated correctly. And let me show you really quickly what this is. So we have our C. It would be kind of like if you were ending this. This would be a great. Oh, sorry, goodness. Um, this would be a great way to end it, to kind of pull into some other key or to some other chord other than the one, unless you really wanted to end on one. So that would be 
a lot of these melodies are really dependent on the rhythm and how you get to certain chords because if you give chords a certain amount of time to ring out people feel more comfortable with allowing them to resolve to something other than their ear hears so for this example Okay, so that works. So if you go to a chord that's not really in the key of C, or you go to a chord that's a borrowed chord, for example, um, it's important to try to get back to the chord that you previously used. So for this instance, I went from F. And it still kind of has that sad sound so let's try another chord let's try um we know if let's try that let's see we we did d minor d flat major uh b flat which we did which didn't work b flat minor which did work let's try f minor okay That worked out really nicely. It had some really nice tension and pull, but it wasn't enough to make you feel super uncomfortable. It was just enough to make you feel that, that little bit of a tug in your heart. Let's play that again. So let's use the same progression, and now let's end it with that B flat minor. So maybe in this particular instance, that B flat minor would be better served on the first pass instead of the second, because the F minor kind of had a little bit more finality to it and kind of led back down to C, whereas the B flat minor kind of replaced and, and moved us into the next phrase. So let's go ahead and record this real quick and um, and, and let's see what happens. Then we'll, then we'll add some strings to it and see what we can see what we can do. Uh, just kind of fill this out. Okay. That's really fast. Sorry about that. Let's go. What is this? Yeah, uh, I'm going to go down 68. Let's try this. There we go. Yeah, OK. All right, so let's record this. Here we go. I just forgot what I was doing. Okay, let me get this in my head so I can play it right. Sorry about that, guys. Oh man, this is the life of being a composer. You just sometimes you know exactly what you want to do, and then you hit that record button, and all of a sudden it just goes all out the window. So we had four and one, one. I was gonna do, I think I was gonna do B flat first so well shoot now I forgot what I was gonna do 
some of you are always some of you are probably thinking man dude you just did it figure it out or here's what it was sorry about this we're just gonna figure this out Okay, so I think what I'm going to use instead of using the B flat in the uh, in the in the in the bass, I'm going to move it up to the D flat just because um, it gave me a little bit more pull. Yeah. Okay, so let's try this again. Hopefully, I'll remember. Okay, so I played the wrong chord, so I'm going to do this one more time. Sorry, guys. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to play with the metronome, and then if I do it well, then I'll capture the recording. Okay, I'm okay with that. There was one goofy note that I should not have played. Ah, there it was. Where was it? Come back here. That. Uh, that needs to be C, I think. Yeah. So my ear actually heard a different chord there, but that A minor works works okay. My ear heard That D7. Oh, man, I love that guy. Oh, yeah, that that's 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 the ticket. So uh, if I were to re-record this, I would make sure that that was a D7. Because um, uh, that A was throwing me off. So let's move this around. Throw it down an octave, and one and one. 
so that even the straight up D chord works. But for this instance, um, oh, that's why I did it F sharp. I hope you guys are finding this interesting because I just love composing on the spot because then my brain like works overtime. So. Ah, there it is. Now it kind of got that D ruined the rest of my chord progression, but. Okay, so th this is this is part of the process of writing for a sad cue in a major key, in a ma in a major uh, in a major mode. Uh, so let's play this through, and I'm actually going to play with some of these strings here. So let's see what happens. I just forgot what I was going to do. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is one of the things about doing um, videos is that once you kind of do them um, and doing these screencasts is that you don't have a chance to, I'm not going to go back and edit this. So um, you guys are seeing this raw live. So it's important to note that I should probably, um, if I'm going to put the strings up high, to follow the melody, at least um, downbeat wise. So let's try that. Okay, so let's just keep that. And then let's add some lower strings. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it leave it like that. So let's go back and re-record this real quick. did <laughs> see oh my goodness i hope you guys are getting a kick out of this because i'm just like killing myself here Ugh. Ah, see, that was going to be pretty. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's sexy right there. Sometimes you'll come across these chords that um, don't, that the, you have these accidental. 
So it's like a suspension into a B minor. So I have a B minor two or a B minor seven with a suspended fourth or a suspended second, sorry. It's technically a D flat six chord and a D flat major seven. But as it's voiced, I want it to be a B flat minor here, but I'm adding the, the G sharp or the A flat and the C. So if you hear it on piano, it'll sound like, um, uh, what did I say it was? There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, so th those types of things that can happen by accident are like, in, at least to me, are like super sexy and super um, just ear candy. Oh, it's it's so wonderful. So, um, so that's kind of diving into the sad um, major. Let's dive. Let's. So I'm going to delete all this. So let's uh, dive into the uh, sad minor. So we're going to kind of use the same process and hopefully it goes a little bit quicker. So for this process, I want to use both the minor as well as suspended chords. So, um, I have a kind of like a predetermined melody and I don't remember if this is actually from something or this is just an incredible melody that everybody should know. So if it is from something, I deeply apologize because I didn't mean, I don't mean any plagiarism at all whatsoever. So, um, here's, here's what I kind of came up with for this, um, sad in a minor mode, if you will. Something kind of like that. Now it's going to work a lot better with strings because if you're writing this for strings, strings can get away with some really cool um, melodic stuff inside chords. So what I mean by that is if you had a string section, like you have the first, second, and violas, playing this, um, playing these reverse stack chords. So you have um, basically addition by subtraction, addition of melody via subtraction of chords. So what, what that means is I play this full chord. It's kind of a creepy chord on its own. But if you listen to the melody and how it's being taken away, your ear hears the note that was being removed. It's kind of a weird phenomenon. So we have this... this um, right? And maybe the director or you as a composer would give a little bit more weight to that C, telling the violins to play um, maybe a mezzo forte where everybody else is playing a, you would have, so you'd have mezzo forte in the string, in the violin ones, you'd have a mezzo piano to mezzo forte crescendo on this B for the second violins, and you'd have a mezzo piano crescendo to forte piano uh, in B3. I hope that makes sense. So let me let me actually record this little section and you'll see what I mean. Uh, so here we go. Okay, so you see what I have here? So I have, let me quantize this for you. So we have um, beat one would be the violins, beat two, violin twos. B3 would be the violas. Okay, so they would actually drop off uh, right there. And that might carry a little bit more. So you see that, that addition of melody by subtraction of chord? So you have this nice 
kind of grotesque C major 7 type chord without the 5th. And that 5th is kind of important. We don't want it in there because that'll give us a E minor sound that we don't want. It's still a C major 7, but it's weird that if you invert chords, how they sound major um, and how they sound minor. Just like in uh, like major minor 7th chords, quick little rabbit trail here. If we have a C major 7, if we have a C major with a major 7th chord... This almost sounds more sad to me. So we have two majors, C major chord with a major seventh, or we have a C major with a minor seventh. Now that sounds more happy to me. That's just my ear. I don't know if it does to you or not, but that's what my ear hears. So if we go back to these um, strings, we have this C minor. I love, now these suspensions, I absolutely love holding on to tension until the absolute last possible moment or even waiting until the, um, until the end of the piece to resolve the suspension. And even then it would be. If it was at the end of the piece, because typically I'd be going into a new scene. Okay, so it's kind of working around that okay so let's 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 uh play this melody out so we have ba -da -da, we'll copy this and paste it and we'll move it down to uh the a okay so now i made this more major copy uh copy this Oops. paste this and we move this down to uh what did i say f but, uh, and then I want that. Okay, so let's see what this, let me delete my automation here and I'll add it back in in just a second. Um, I've got a, a, get, uh, a really cool gadget tech for you guys in a couple of weeks. Uh, using this uh, Leap Motion Controller, man, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, so I'll get into that later. So here's here's this little string part. So I'll, I'll um, play the automation with it and we'll kind of use use that. Oh, that wasn't what I wanted. What did I have? Ah, that stupid C sharp is making it all major. <laughs> all right. Hopefully that works. All right, so I'm going to play this through once I deleted it. Here we go. I want a slower tempo. Yeah, that'll work. Maybe I'll go down to 52 just to milk it just a little bit more. Oops. So I didn't like how I started that anyway. So here we go. One more time. Here we go.
All right, so something like that. So um, that's kind of looking at it from a minor key perspective. So the chords would be a... Um, uh, an A minor, so we're in the key of A minor now. So let's go back and I'll add some piano. This is completely improvised, so I apologize for the clam fingers. Here we go. It's also really a fun idea to have certain instruments. Um, let me record. Uh, it, it, to have certain instruments resolve and others not. It creates this, um, particularly if you have two characters that are kind of battling against each other, um, like estranged lovers or what have you, that uh, you have one of them resolving their conflict and the other one is still unresolved. It's, it's a very um, emotional piece that a lot of directors that, are, that I've come across uh, that they really like. They're, they just still want to hold on to that tension with a sense of there being relief in either one or the, one of the two parties. So, um, yeah, so let's listen to this again. I'm actually going to re-record this piano part because now I know what I want to do. I guess I knew what I wanted to do. Let's try that one more time. Yeah. Now, uh, something really pretty to go over that would probably be a nice horn line coming down. Something like that. And just kind of taking that. So that that's a good melody that would fill everything out. Again, I don't know if this is from anything. It just sounds something that is supposed to be there. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. So anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to wrap this up. I've uh, been going quite a while here. So I hope this was a little more, uh, I hope some of this was clear. I hope you got some enjoyment out of it. And, um, uh, next week we're going to be looking at the emotion of happy. And I may in fact spend two weeks on this. I'm, I'm going to try to get it all done in one week. If it's, if it's one week, it's going to be a really long episode. Um, and if it's two weeks, I'll try to make them a little bit shorter. So, um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave me in the comments section. And if you have any recommendations for videos in the upcoming future, uh, please drop those in the comments as well, or send me a message. Also in two weeks, you do not want to miss this. This is going to be a, um, a video, uh, tech Thursday where I am with Kevin Simon and we're going to be talking about composition and he is going to just ask me random questions about how to compose for certain things. So I have no idea what he's going to ask and I look forward to hearing what he has to ask. And so it's going to be a lot of fun and, um, yeah, I hope you guys have a fantastic Thursday. I'm going to enjoy my weekend and, uh, I will see you guys next Thursday. Talk to you later. Peace.